Hello everyone, this is your annual reminder from the attic that Jesus was a socialist. everyone, welcome to Attic Philosophy. On the channel we're covering all aspects of philosophy. We've covered plenty of abstract metaphysics and logic. I want to spend some time thinking about the philosophy of some social issues and it's Christmas time, it's currently Boxing Day, I've got a bit of downtime. I was thinking about, you know, social issues that are going on in the world at the moment and also Christianity, the Christmas message and these things started kind of mixing with one another and it just kind of seemed obvious to me that, yeah, Jesus, of course he was a socialist. Now, what exactly there do I mean by Jesus and what do I mean by socialism? Well, start with Jesus. I'm a, I'm a philosopher. I'm an atheist. I don't really believe that there was anyone who performed the miracles as they were written in the Bible, but I'm willing to believe that there was somebody who did most of the stuff ascribed to Jesus, who said the things, the words that we see written down in the Gospels. What do I mean by socialism? Well, socialism in the modern sense, it was quite a specific reaction to capitalism, to early capitalism, to working conditions in the 18th and 19th centuries, particularly in England. I mean, I'm not saying that Jesus was into that. I'm not saying that Jesus was obviously an anti-capitalist. What I do think is that modern socialism had a lot of historical antecedents throughout the Middle Ages, going back even further. And I think one of the early antecedents was the teachings of Jesus that we find in the Bible, especially the focus on helping the needy, the sick, the poor. That just seems obviously a uh, historical antecedent of socialism. OK, so let's look at that in a little bit more detail. What do we find Jesus saying through the Gospels that offers us support for socialism? OK, so let's look at Luke's Gospel. Well-known Sermon on the Plain, Jesus says, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. OK, and this is often interpreted as saying that the poor, the sick, the needy, they're going to get their reward in the next life. But as we go on in Luke, we see that the message isn't really about the next life. It's about looking after the poor, the sick, the needy now in this life. Let everyone who possesses two shirts share with him who has none and let him has food do likewise. Give to every man that asketh of thee. Messages of giving, of sharing with the needy. Basically, distribution of resources to those who need it, levelling up, making a more equal society. That kind of sounds a little bit like socialism to me. We hear a lot of love thy neighbour, treat your neighbour as yourself. And that's kind of sometimes interpreted to mean look at those close to home, charity starts at home, that kind of thing. That's not the message we're meant to get from Luke because we follow this up with the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus tells this parable and just to set the scene, the idea is that the Samaritans were considered this heretical sect by the Jews. So they were kind of like the enemy. But there's this Jewish traveller. He's struggling. A bunch of priests go past. They ignore him. Who helps him out? The Samaritan, the guy he was kind of like most opposed to. Why does Jesus tell this parable? Because he's being asked, when you say love thy neighbour, who counts as my neighbour? Jesus tells this parable. It's the sick. It's the needy. Who is it you're meant to help? It's all these people who need it most. OK, so to me, this seems pretty clearly to be pushing towards the idea that when we think about how society should be organised, how resources should be distributed, we consider people's needs and we consider everyone's needs and we focus most on the the hungry the needy the sick i think we see this message of care and distribution of resources to the needy even more clearly in matthew's gospel so there's the parable of the sheep and the goats so you've got jesus on his throne and he's dividing humanity into the the good on the right and the the bad on the left and he says to those on the right inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world for I was hungry, you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. 
I was in prison and you came to me. Now, these guys that Jesus is talking to, they're kind of confused because they don't really remember doing that to Jesus specifically. So they asked him, like, well, when did we do that to you, Jesus? You know, in what sense did we do that to you? And he says, because you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. And then he basically does the same thing to the bad guys on the left. He said, because you did didn't do it to the least of my brothers, you didn't do it to me. Okay, so the ethics of this parable couldn't be clearer. In order to act rightly, compassionately, in a Christian way, you have to treat the worst off, the most needy in society in a caring and compassionate way, as if they were themselves Jesus, okay? And if you don't treat those most needy, including people in prison, if you don't treat them well, then Jesus is saying, you're not treating him well. Okay, so these messages, these parables from the Gospels, they're all messages of care and support for the needy. But it goes beyond that. We've also got in Matthew the parable of the workers in the vineyard. Okay, so here we've got a, a, a landowner who um, employs people for the day. He gives everybody a day's wage. But people start at different times throughout the day. So the people who start in the morning, they work a full day. Then some people come along and they, they start mid-morning and some people start midday. Some people come along in the afternoon and just do like an hour or two's work. But at the end of it, the landowner pays them all the same. And when people say, well, why did, why did you do that? Like these people have worked loads and these people haven't worked very much at all. Surely you should give them different amounts depending on how much they've done. He says, no, this is it's my money and it's up for me to distribute as I want. And the point of this is that the landowner, he's not giving out his money, you know, distributing resources based on what people have done, their, their talents, their achievements. He's doing it based on their needs. These are all people and they all need the same pay. They all need the same food at the end of the day. OK, so he is distributing his resources based on people's needs. Kind of, in other words, socialism. So these ideas that we find in the gospel, I think these are really central to Christ's message. But we don't find these messages only in the gospels. So, for instance, St. Basil, a couple of hundred years after Christ, one of the Eastern Church founders, he says, The bread in your hoard belongs to the hungry. The cloak in your wardrobe belongs to the naked. The shoes you let rot belong to the barefoot. The money in your vaults belongs to the destitute. All you might help and do not, to all these you are doing wrong. That couldn't be clearer. He's not just talking about care. He's talking about distribution of resources from those who have it to those who don't have it because we care for people equally. And we care about people's needs. So when we see people who have needs, who don't have the material goods they, they need to fulfil those needs, it's up to us, the better off in society, to give to them. So according to these kind of ideas, what would a good moral society look like? It would be one that redistributes from those who have a lot to those who don't. A quality based on people's needs. Uh, in a word, socialism. So when I started thinking about these ideas, you know, was Jesus a socialist? I kind of did a bit of research. Yeah, I actually did do some research. You, you probably wouldn't guess. And I found a bunch of videos on YouTube and they basically had this common theme. There's this angry sounding white guy saying, of course, Jesus wasn't a socialist because... And their point was basically Jesus wasn't a socialist because socialism is all about state interference and Jesus never once talked about state interference. This is such a bad argument for kind of two main reasons. For one thing, if you don't want state interference, that doesn't make you a capitalist. That makes you an anarchist. And I don't think many of these people are really advocating anarchism. Secondly, socialism isn't fundamentally about state interference. Socialism is about distributing to help the needy. It's about equality. It's about levelling up and it's about seeing to people's needs. State redistribution is the mechanism that achieves that goal. But socialism at its core, at its heart, is about equality, equality as we consider people's needs. And, you know, as far as the Jesus bit goes, I do kind of vaguely remember something about everybody being taken care of in the kingdom of heaven, you know, something like that. So like I said before, I'm not religious, I'm not a theist, I'm an atheist. So what is my take on all of this? Why am I banging on about Christianity? From my point of view, we have these 
stories in the gospel, not because they're passed down from God, but because Jesus was doing moral teachings. These are things that we find when we reflect on moral principles. But as a society, we have to be reminded of these things every now and then because we forget. We pursue our own interests. We pursue selfish financial interests. Everybody is interested in kind of wealth to some degree. And and sometimes we just need people to come along and remind us about what is moral, what is important in life. Okay, and, you know, a lot of us, we do stop around Christmas time and we think about these things. We, you know, we always hear about the Christmas message, the Christmas. Christian message. You know, and I guess my take is it's not fundamentally about charity or sending out hopes and prayers or whatever. It's about thinking seriously about how we can build a kinder, more compassionate, more equal society for everyone, like literally everyone. How can we do that? And I'm convinced, and I'm pretty sure Jesus too was convinced that the answer is through socialist ideals. So I know you guys are going to have loads to say on this. Leave me a comment below. It's been really great hearing all your feedback. If you've been enjoying this kind of content, why not subscribe to the channel? Hit the bell icon to get updates. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've had a fantastic Christmas, a great winter break. I know times are tough for so many people right now, so I wish you all the best for you and your family. And I'll see you back soon for more Attic Philosophy. (laughs) 